Well, we're headed to Kentucky again, and this is what it looks like trying to get there. Dead stop traffic, creeping along at least for the next eight miles. Well, I'm in Kentucky scouting Peabody Wildlife Management Area, and I'll tell you one thing about this place I've learned already is there's these little old waterways everywhere you look down here. Looks like a strip pits where maybe it was all strip mine at one time, some high banks, spoil areas. Just navigating in and around all this is creating a little bit of a challenge for a newbie like me. Just pretty much everywhere you turn around, you got one of those little old bitty water pits. A lot of people come down here and they say it's good fishing. I will say they got some really good roads down here, the road systems. You don't see potholes very often in these places. Take much better care of the roads and stuff than we do in Alabama. Well, it didn't take me very long to find me a creek bed to walk up and down and see if I could find some tracks crossing, following them back to a bed area. This place is a lot thicker than what I thought it would be. You know, I always thought Kentucky was pretty open ground, but this Peabody Wildlife Management Area has flat, got some thick stuff in it. Almost thick enough in here, ain't it? That's good right here. That's a pretty good uh, fresh bed right there. A lot of deer hair in it. So you know they're bedding in this nasty trash. Imagine that. Deer bedding in trash. I thought we was going to get out of here. <laughs> you thought we was going to get out of here going this way? Well, <laughs> I don't know where to what. I was looking for. I don't know how deer get in and out of this stuff. It looked like there was an opening back this way. We could cut across. This one deer trail just notice how it pinched off that main trail by itself and he followed it. And it just went straight to that deer bed. And dead ended pretty much. I should have brought my machete. Oh. Crawling around here like a snake here in a minute. We figure about 20 yards off the creek bank. It's real thick in this bottom. You got a deer bed here. Turn around, deer bed there. Turn around, deer bed there. You got three beds right here. That over there is four. Probably doe bedding in this right here. But you got a buck rub on that tree right next to the bed. So that makes you think it could be small group of bucks maybe it ain't fresh so but they are bedding there ah oh, my hunt stand out ain't working it won't even open up and load so i can't waypoint any of these bed areas that makes it difficult relying on my memories about this <laughs> about like relying on the government you know what i mean <laughs> this should be right in front of when we pulled up the park at that high ridge. There's a little gap between these two humps. It's so thick you can't walk through it, but I don't know which way I want to go back and around. Uh, I want to continue trying to push through. I guess that answered that question. He's going through the thick stuff. It's a historical rub. But you can tell he's rubbed basically all the way around it. And that's a decent size rub right there. What I got here, we have a real thick edge that runs on the opposite side of this ridge. And we got a real thick ridge point that comes down, drops off into this 
little bit of area with hardwoods in it and there's not a lot of hardwoods in this area so this is a feature right here that kind of stands out from everything around here that's so monotonous in the terrain so we got a little draw right there and in the head of that draw at the very top is a thick edge creating a pinch point a lot of these bucks will circle around with a north wind they'll go around the hot head of that draw right there and tops these ridges they'll be able to scent check all these does down in here and then all these bottoms that are feeding around on acorns even during the rut right now they're hammering these acorns in here you see acorn caps all over the ground i don't know if they'll be all dropped out when november gets here or not but i'm hoping there'll be a few red oaks and different trees still lingering with a few acres on it and the deer does key in on them the bucks be hunting the doe so i want to get in this spot here i've waypointed I've, i found three good potential locations for stand setups in this area we're going to name this area a since it's the first spot we've tried to look at and now we're fixing to leave here, go back to the truck, and look for a, another area B. Because you never want to have just one spot. I come in here in November and I find deer hunters all over the place. Right now it doesn't show any hunter sign or activity, but you never know. There could be five or six guys in here come November trying to hunt this. and Of course, I'll have to look for another spot. We're headed to spot B. Well, we, we're at spot B and uh, first thing I noticed right off the bat is in between all these little high humps and ridges you got these little strip pit lakes so all the deer that are in the rut traveling back and forth through here are gonna most likely funnel around the edges of these strip pit areas and these little high ridges uh, they could potentially bed up there, you know, staging up, trying to monitor does. There's a really beat down trail on the other side of that. There's a lot of hardwood bottom on that side as well. There's a lot of acorns and deer feeding on acorns at this point in time. Uh, fresh deer droppings. I've seen some good rubs already. A lot of historical rubs in here. It's trashy enough right here on this little hump. Plenty of cover. Definitely been a coyote or two coming down through here. Coyotes scat all up and down that track trail there. They're coming around the heads of these little old lakes. Mike, there's a trail back there. Right off the bat. Cutting into the edge of that little ridge. Parallel and dropping off down into this uh, little draw. It's, it's, what it's doing is all it's doing is heading around the upper end of that lake. That's all it's doing. I found a little bit of fresh dropping. Come up the trail right outside this ridge. I think we're gonna get. I think it's gonna look a lot the same all the way up through here. I, I think the only thing you're gonna be able to do here is either get on the side of one of these little ridges, or in the heads of one of these uh, drainages where the lakes are. Yeah. It's gonna be a pretty much no-brainer set up here. I like them little high ridges because the bucks can set up on them high ridges, and they can bed. And they can monitor does traveling back and forth from bed to feed. And you know all that back up in yonder on the other side, all this is good bed. And you know everything on this side's feed. So I'm going to walk top of that ridge, loop back around. You can scout down this, stay low on this bench. And when we hit, I'll, I'll, what I'll do, I'll go up and I'll circle back around. When I hit you down there, we'll go back to the truck. All right. Sound like a plan? I mean, you can really tell it's pretty plain to see that as soon as you get in the head of this little drainage, all the deer are just kind of walking right around the upper end of it. Pretty obvious. You could just about call this right here a pinch point on its own. I think a lot of hunters, just my opinion, once they come out there and they start seeing all these little lakes, pits, I think they're going to turn around, not going to go up these super steep embankments. You see the deer just got this trail beat down. 
coming off the top of these high ridges because that's I think that's where they like to bed. All these trails kind of drop off into this little bowl behind me, which ends up in the head of that slough. Some of them are traveling the drainage straight down, but all of them seem to be coming from this direction. I'm almost at the top of this thing. They don't really have mountains in Kentucky, they're just steep little hills, small hollows. Most everything around here is flat, monotonous, same territory. To get up on top of this thing, it kind of flattens out. It starts to look real pretty. What I'm looking for, I'm not really looking for a feed sign right now to hunt on because I'm not hunting this week. I'm scouting for potential pinches, funnels, travel corridors for the rut. Well, there ain't no water down there. It's just a hardwood holler. That's interesting. That'd be kind of like an isolated hardwood holler out here in the middle of all this stuff. Really starting to like this a little bit. It's kind of funny when you think about it, but really it makes sense. This is a steep little old bank all the way down through there for a pretty long ways. You're getting this bottom basically as flat as a pancake for a little ways. And you got a steep ridge on the other side. And these steep ridges don't really have any features pointing out of them. They're just edges. But if you look at that, I don't know if you can tell looking at the horizon there, but right there, it's a small two-foot gap. It ain't much at all. But it just, it's, it's not as steep there, and it's not as steep there, and it's more of a, a gradual drop down into this bottom. And it got that little bitty gap, that small gradual drop, beat down where they've been going up, right here in this little gap. You know, a lot of folks just, in all honesty, overlook that. And more than likely, it's all doe groups, you know, young bucks and does coming in. He's got a little small historical rub right here next to this little gap opening. Uh, it's crazy. The little bitty things that, that you got to pay attention to, this could be right here, a real easy, accessible place to get to. And all you'd want to do is just set up right on the side of the ridge, downwind side of that little bitty small gap. He probably killed deer right here. And he probably one on the other side doing the same thing. So you get in between these two ridges, you catch all these deer coming down in here in late in the evenings to feed. Well, I named this little spot right here two gaps because. 20 yards from that gap is another gap where, where the deer are just coming down the side of the hill, side hill, and then uh, 10 yards from that is another one with a side hill. Down this, a lot of deer are dropping off that ridge right there, coming this way. I'm going to follow that ridge back out because this right here is a good spot. It's hard to tell in all these leaves and everything, but Deer tracks are going both directions, downhill and uphill, on these trails. We're running a little bit short on time for scouting. I'm just going to keep that in the back of my mind. I think that ridge over yonder might be the better ridge. It's starting to make a lot more sense why all those deer are doing what they did. Because it's really thick up on top of that ridge. It's pretty easy walking. Once you get up there, and all them trails kind of merge together and all dropping into this little finger right here. You see that, that hill there is a steep hill and it kind of slopes down. I can see buck rubs over on that ridge from here. It slopes down, it's going to this little, almost creating a little saddle. But it's not in between two high ridges. It's just dropping off into a, uh, another steep bank. It's a steep bank all the way up and down through there. But right there is another little gap. Not much, but these deer are apparently lazy and they want to utilize these low spots to walk, low ditches. 
it all just come right here. See how steep that is. It drops off really steep. I like that ridge over there. I, mean, I think there's going to be more bucks on that side over there. Just harder to access. Cane, switchgrass, everything in the world down in there. I don't know what, I, what you call all that mess. Reeds. But these deer don't seem to be going through that. It might be a, a soggy bottom or something. They're kind of going around it. Uh, there's a little island right there. Looks like hard ground. And there's a lot of, a lot of deer going right straight down to that little point, I imagine. I mean, I wouldn't put it past a big old buck just a bed right there in that little marsh. It's sitting down in a bowl. Got high ridges all around him. Ain't nothing gonna get to him. This might be a spot I'll pay attention to as well. You beat me back to the truck, Mike. Yeah, I got... I either had to go around the lake. You probably went around it. I went around it. You either had to go around the lake or turn back. I chose to turn back. You should have went around the lake. It was pretty. I don't know how many crazy folks would walk stuff like this, but... He's deer. Definitely going to be out in all this mess somewhere. We're going to go find them. Getting blisters on my feet. Start to get wimping out. Alright. Any of you guys out there watching this? You got hard core deer hunters. <laughs> and then you got stupid ones like us. <laughs> who who want to try to figure out are the deer in there? No. We can't even. We're having to cut our way out here. Don't be stupid. Well, Kentucky's got plenty of turkeys if you guys like to turkey hunt. I see a bunch of long beards out there in this group. Nice. Now, you guys probably know by now I'm not much of a turkey hunter, but I do like filming them and messing around with them. I don't know what the head bobbing all about, but it looks like they're all dancing. Now we're back at Mike's house right now. And we're just standing outside the garage looking out across this big open field. And there's several doe groups out there milling around. Right in his backyard. Now my wife, she never gets tired of watching these deer. She would love to have deer in our backyard coming up each and every day, milling around in these fields. We just don't have that luxury. We do have a couple of deer that stay in the neighborhood, and on occasion we do get to see them. I actually had one in my backyard the other day and filmed him. Well, Mike cut out across the yard to his truck. The does are on to him. There they go. Ducking and dodging. Well, we're back to scouting now. Well, we're in a big old hardwood bottom next to a swamp. Running that whole edge of that swamp. There's a bunch of historical rubs running all up and down through there. And what we're running into, we're on the edge of private. And these deer are going back and forth across private, public. I think they're actually bedding on public, not private, maybe going out there to feed. But we found a gap in a fence right on the corner of this swamp where these deer are going underneath this fence. So we think this, well, I think it's going to be a pretty good spot. Mike seems to think so as well for a rut location. So it's just as flat, open, pretty down through here as you can ask for. Kind of reminds me of some of the places in Alabama. These are some of the historical rubs we're looking at. I like I like where this tree has fell over this fence. It's not all 50 yards from the other fence gap. That, yeah, and it's dead under a big, big old acorn tree. It's dropping acorns are dropping everywhere down here. But if you look out across there, that's all high grass, and there's a ditch over there. And these three ditches meet together right there. Just but That's on private. We can't hunt over there. But if them deer slip over here on this side, they jump this fence right here where we're at, which they are doing. Then they'll be right here within bow range of this corner. This corner's a real good pinch. So 
we've waypointed this spot. It's going to be called spot number C. We just just jumped a deer a while ago. We got this little swamp right here. Got them reeds. We ain't getting in that stuff. We we learned a lesson yesterday about getting in that mess. Gonna walk this edge all the way back out. We got a waypoint up here on the ridge. We're gonna cut across, go back to the truck. We can't scout very long today, but Mike is educating me on Kentucky deer. He is cluing me in on how they act versus Alabama deer. And he just uh, flat out told me, Don, forget Alabama deer. You're in Kentucky. Don't think like that no more. <laughs> it's hard to get away from it though. But this is this is really interesting coming up here scouting with him and learning the differences in the way deer react and, and the cover and the things they relate to. My Lutus trail coming in out of the swamp right here. Coming back out of that little swamp edge into the hardwood bottom, we start seeing a little bit fresher rubs. And what I like, we were just, I absolutely just got this out of my mouth with Mike. I told him, I said, I don't discard small trees, but I like to see them when they're broken in half and shredded. Because that lets me know that it's a bigger buck. He said, well, how do you know? He's broke his limbs off. He snapped that tree in half. Well, a, a small rack buck is not going to be able to do that. You have to have pretty decent long tines to get them trees in there to be able to twist his head and snap these trees in two. You're not going to catch a little old buck breaking trees like this. So that's one little thing you can look for. Keep in mind when you're scouting. We got a little scrape right here. It's not much, but it's a little bit of activity. We're getting fresh rubs. What we got, the woods is kind of open up through there on that high ridge. And we got a little bit of a drainage right here. I know y'all probably hate me moving this camera as much, but this little drainage right here is really thick. And it's not high up on the ridge, it's low on the ridge. So these bucks are obviously staying in this cover, working their way through these hardwoods. They're not getting up high on the ridges where it's open, and they're not getting way down in the bottoms where it's open. They're just staying on this side of the ridge where it's thicker. This is where all the fresh buck rubs and activities and scrapes and everything is we're locating. So makes perfect sense. Stay in the trash. And it's gonna be like this all the way up through this edge. That and there's a little bit better rub. He's kind of shredded that tree a little bit. I'm liking this spot. I think during the rut it's really going to kick off good. Well, Mike and I are pretty much wore out from scouting. We scouted all day yesterday. I found three potential locations. Uh, we walked a long ways yesterday. Scout a spot that we waypointed. And when we got there, there was a fence running all the way down through there, blocking our access. Hunt stand out said it was public land. Obviously lied to us. So we went back We tried to locate it on a paper map. Well, in Kentucky, you got to print it off your computer. So we did that. And sure enough, it ended up being private land. We wasted a whole lot of time walking, though, trying to find that spot. I don't know if you guys learned anything at all on the scout video, but some of you guys think it's like watching paint dry. Some of you guys pick up on a little bit, tidbit here and there. I just hope that y'all can gain something from it. And uh, honest to goodness, I hope whatever it is you gain from it, that you kill a big old buck with it. Because this is the way you're going to find them. You got to get out here and scout, guys. Put boot leather on the ground. You can waypoint and e-scout all you want, but... Until you get out there and actually see what the deer are doing, you don't know where the best setups is going to be. You got to find them pinch points, places that is going to narrow those deer down to a bow shot. That's what I'm looking for. A deer sign everywhere.
but not everywhere can I get a bow shot. One thing I've noticed about Kentucky is that these deer down here, they ain't got nothing to eat. You know, I mean, I, I don't know why they ain't just pure skin and bone. There's, there's nothing to eat down here. Well, Peabody Wildlife Management Area in Kentucky turned out to be just a little more of a challenge than I expected it to be. The terrain was a lot thicker than I anticipated, and I'm really looking forward to coming back in November and testing my skills on these bucks. The leaves are changing colors in Kentucky, and makes for a pretty nice drive back home. Well, we headed back to Alabama. Had a good trip in Kentucky, enjoyed it.